And good morning. Wearing pink. Don't forget, Real Men Wear Pink is this month, and I'm on my way to raising $7,500, but I can't do it without you. Go donate at WMAY.com slash pink and join us tonight after work. We're going to be over at Obed and Isaacs for a fundraising event, all in an effort to raise funds and awareness about breast cancer and to provide help, support, and research for those who are diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, so realmenwearpink.com slash pink. Our efforts being helped by Heartland Hearing. Better hearing starts today. All right, let's get into it. Uh, now, I wasn't sure that there were going to be any public forums of sorts between the incumbent Democratic Illinois Attorney General Kwame Raoul and the Republican challenger, Thomas DeVore, uh, but there was one. The Illinois Associated Press Editors Association, they uh, formed this virtual committee uh, where they had uh, the candidates uh, uh, address each other and various issues. Uh, so I wanted to take a moment to kind of unpack some of those issues. Now, one big one that, of course, uh, is is top of mind was uh, really why I think uh, Thomas DeVore uh, got into the race, and that dealt with his litigation against the state over COVID-19 mitigations. So he sued the state multiple times, different avenues, different venues, uh, different levels of government even, uh, over over the stay-at-home policies. He he was the attorney for uh, state uh, then representative uh, uh, Darren Bailey, who's now a state senator and running for governor uh, against the incumbent Democrat. Uh, so Tom DeVore represented Bailey in that case back in the summer of 2020. And then he continued to represent individuals who felt they were wronged by the governor's continued executive orders, including hundreds of parents and school students and staff that were suing the state board of education and school districts over COVID-19 mandates, stay at home orders, uh, exclusion policies from schools, mask mandates, and so on. So DeVore, very busy over the past two and a half years, suing the state, trying to provide a check uh, of the governor's executive action and defending the governor in that is the incumbent Democrat, Illinois Attorney General Kwame Raoul. So you can see the uh, the the conflicts there. Right. It's an interesting race and some some uh, very, I think, um, uh, hard to track arguments about COVID mitigations, uh, but that's what the courts are for, is to take those controversies, hear them, and then process them. Uh, some of those cases were dismissed. Other cases are still pending, from my understanding. Uh, but here's what Attorney General Kwame Raoul had to say about defending the governor's COVID-19 executive orders when he was uh, part of this forum earlier this week. Uh, again, uh, Attorney General Kwame Raoul, and then we'll hear um, the Republican uh, candidate, uh, Tom DeVore, as well. So uh, here we go. Um, we were faced with a deadly pandemic that... Uh, was unprecedented. Uh, it was indeed an emergency. We were we had our hospitals overflowing. We had people dying. I had personal friends who have died from the uh, uh, coronavirus, and so there was no inconsistency in representing uh, the the government actors and representing the people. And the numbers demonstrate it. Uh, if you compare us uh, to states that surrounded us who did not uh, impose the same type of mitigations we, <clears throat> we impose on a per capita basis, we save more lives. We, we hospitalize uh, uh, less, less people. We had less people going on uh, ventilators. And, and, and that's what emergency powers are meant to do, uh, to, to save lives. And uh, so I would do nothing differently than uh, we had done. And, and uh, I, I will agree with uh, Mr. DeVore. It was a fair question to ask, but how many times you ask it uh, is a fair question to ask, too. It was asked and answered multiple times in multiple lawsuits, uh, and the court's resources should not have been abused as they were. Uh, and again, that was uh, Illinois Attorney General Kwame Raoul reacting to uh, questions about his defense of the governor's continued executive orders. And he says they were asked and answered, but there's still some pending litigation going on uh, surrounding COVID mitigation. Uh, Attorney General candidate Tom DeVore, uh, again, part of this this virtual forum uh, that was recently held uh, for the two candidates. And uh, he responded to some of what uh, Illinois Attorney General Kwame Raoul had to say. 
Yeah, I have a very brief response. I mean, everything that I just heard Mr. I will talk about was about the policy positions that were pursued by the executive branch. That's where, with all due respect, he missed the issue completely. Any of those policies that the governor thought were appropriate should have been pursued and vetted through the General Assembly. And the legislature should have been the one to craft those solutions. And to the extent they would have done that, we would have not been in court. We were in court because the executive officer took it upon himself to go to doing executive fiat tantamount to lawmaking in violation of the separation of powers. If our attorney general would have stood up and said that this is an excessive use, like Judge Grisho did, calling it the evil that the law was intended to protect the people against, we wouldn't have had to have gone down this path. But we went down this path, not because of the policies, but because of the excessive nature that the executive branch was disregarding the legislature. So that's uh, the Republican candidate, Tom DeVore, uh, addressing some of what uh, the incumbent Democrat uh, had to say about the COVID mitigations and the lawsuits. So that was one issue. Uh, they also talked about uh, how to fight public corruption. Uh, and DeVore, uh, very critical of Raul's office for not pursuing the uh, alleged uh, workers comp fraud case that uh, we've highlighted of uh, Jenny Thornley uh, and there's still no prosecution in that case there's overtime fraud being prosecuted but not uh, the the workers comp allegations uh, so there was some back and forth about that uh, and also um, uh, the the Republican uh, critical of the Democrat for not uh, going after public corruption more uh, including the uh, you know nine or so uh, former or uh, current uh, state lawmakers that are facing federal charges. Uh, the the Republican uh, challenger to uh, Raul says that, uh, well, those, uh, those, those could be uh, state charges parallel with federal charges, and that's not being done. But Raul fired back and said, listen, you know, he's got public corruption cases and he's dealing with like a dozen or so uh, and uh, kind of uh, listed some of those, but none of which were of the level that we've seen at the Illinois State House at the federal prosecutors are going after to tackle corruption. So they talked about that. They also talked about uh, gun legislation or gun gun mitigation or how the attorney general uh, plays a role in gun control. Uh, so that was uh, another element of the conversation. But then things got a little personal uh, with questions to the uh, Republican challenger, uh, Thomas DeVore, about his law practice. And not just about his law practice, but also uh, about uh, several defamation lawsuits that he's filed to against people like the governor uh, for calling him a uh, grifter. Um, and uh, even down to, you know, uh, somebody in his, his personal life as well. So the moderators of the this uh, Illinois Associated Press me media editors uh, group. Uh, they asked DeVore about those uh, defamation cases. Uh, and uh, we'll also hear uh, the Attorney General, Kwame Raoul, respond to some of that and uh, some more of that back and forth. So stay here. It's right now with Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop. Let's hear that now from uh, uh, Attorney Thomas DeVore being asked about if he's going to pursue defamation cases in the future if he was elected Attorney General. But look, let's talk about the attorney or the governor's comments. The governor's comments, he never at one time said that what he uh, called me, which is a thief for all intents and purposes, wasn't defamatory. He raised the argument that as the governor, he can defame people all he wants and go about saying whatever he likes. And he has that immunity. That was his argument. As to these other causes of action, those are personal issues uh, to the extent those persons are trying to say those things. But in general, I'll say Merely because you know how many people are stifled to run for office because they're scared that they're going to be absolutely taken to task on their whole manner of things that exceed the office a lot. You know what? Governor Pritzker just sent a letter through his law firm to a news organization in the north saying that what you're doing is defamatory to me. Please stop. So when it rises to the level of it's not just political talk. And it's accusing people of committing crimes and saying other things that impugn their ability to do their job. They have an absolute right to defend themselves. Me, the governor, Mr. Raul, and anybody. And to suggest that it has some ulterior motive other than defending your character, I take issue with that because that's what it's about. The governor had the right to send that letter when he sent it. No, just as much as I have the right to defend myself. And if someone says something like that to Mr. Raul, I would hope he would do the same thing. 
Now, uh, Attorney General Raul, uh, he he jumped into the fray here and uh, continued his criticism of the Republican challenger, Thomas DeVore, in pursuing defamation cases. I had even brought up a case I wasn't familiar with until recently of uh, uh, allegations that DeVore said uh, poor things about certain types of individuals. And DeVore turned around and uh, sought litigation against somebody who claimed that DeVore made some statements. So uh, interesting to hear this back and forth. And it's, this is a bit of a longer clip, but I, I want to play it in its entirety because it includes you know, the statements, the response, statement and response from these two candidates. Again, incumbent Democratic uh, Illinois Attorney General Kwame Raoul and uh, Republican challenger Thomas DeVore. Here's how that uh, uh, one of the final moments of the forum recently uh, played out. If someone defamed me, any time in the future, am I going to defend myself? Absolutely. But to suggest that that means you're going to go out and just start filing lawsuits against people at will, that's a poor choice of words and completely irresponsible for whoever asked that question. Of course, I'm going to defend myself if I need to. No more than Attorney General Raul will defend himself and, it, and Governor Pritzker currently defends himself. So it's not unique to me. I can reply because I think your line of questions speaks to something that we as lawyers and of course, certainly as attorney general uh, have to have uh, a respect for is, and, and that's the court's resources. Um, you know, lawyers, uh, whether they're attorney general or in, independently, uh, can be sanctioned for abuse of, of, of filing uh, lawsuits uh, and non meritorious lawsuits. As we talk about the, law, the defamation lawsuits that were referenced before, including uh, one for uh, against a special ed teacher for objecting uh, to Mr. DeFore, uh, referring to uh, uh, some kids as window lickers. Um, first off, we don't. I don't think we want the courts to be used to uh, to to uh, stop uh, teachers from being protective of of, of students when somebody's uh, going to do something that I think is just unconscionable, um, um, and then. The other thing is, uh, that's important to look at is uh, the outcome of those lawsuits. Uh, that lawsuit was, uh, uh, um, you know, eventually dismissed, right? You know, and, and, and so it's one thing to fa file a lawsuit. If you're really trying to file a meritorious lawsuit, carry it out uh, to the point where, where, where you know it has merit and you can prevail. Um, if the number, no, one def the number one definition to... Uh, the, the, the number one defense to defamation is truth. You know, Attorney General Raul, let me just say what you just said on this camera is defamatory because you weren't there. You don't know anything about it. It was not everything to do with special needs kids. It didn't have anything to do with a special ed teacher. None of that. I, I didn't so say anything about you're... special needs kids. Yes, yeah, you did. I said kids. I said yeah, kids. You said, well, we, you you said you... disabled kids. But you know I what? I dropped, I dropped the case because the, the young man who made those defamatory statements was scared to death. And so why should I put him through more than I already went through? So, so don't talk about things you don't know what you're talking about. I mean, how many special needs kids have suffered tremendously for your failure to defend them against the governor's tyrannical behavior? Thousands and thousands of special needs kids have lost their learning that they'll never recover in their lifetime. That's true. And that's on you, sir. So please don't talk to me about some alleged defamatory issue from five years ago when the kids of this state will never recover from your failure to defend them against the governor. Please don't go there with me, sir. Thank you for your reply, Ms. Mr. DeVore. Um, if, you, if you take time to rewatch the tape, you'll find out that I did not say special needs. Uh, kids. I, I said, I said, I said kids. And I think what you said about kids, whether special needs or not, is despicable. Okay. All right. I think them losing their education for years and never going to recover because you failed them is despicable. Thank you, sir. 
So again, that's uh, some of the back and forth from a recent debate. It was an hour long. Uh, they touched on a whole bunch of different topics, but those were just a few of the highlights that I figured I would unpack for you this morning. Uh, and that was uh, incumbent Illinois Democratic Attorney General Kwame Raoul and the Republican challenger Thomas DeVore. Uh, of course, the election's November 8th. Early voting's underway now. Uh, and uh, it's just one of those statewide races that uh, everybody across Illinois is going to have to uh, make a decision on.